joining me now is Ronan Lee. He is a visiting scholar at Queen Mary University of London's International State Crime Initiative. Uh, Ronan, good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for your patience. We had to sort of dip into, into Washington and carry uh, the president's um, uh, words on, on gun control. All right, lots more to cover with you, a whole range of questions. But I want to start by asking you, you know, uh, more than two months in, are you at all surprised with where we are? Well, no, this was always going to be a long battle. It was not going to be something that the military would easily give in over. And it's certainly not a, a fight that uh, the, the people of Myanmar were going to easily give in. I mean, this is two, uh, two entities, the military and the people of Myanmar, whose interests are polar opposites. The military wants complete control of the country and they'll use extreme violence to achieve it. The people want no instance of military control of their government. They want the military out of politics and out of politics permanently. So it was always going to be a long battle. But it's a, a, a strong sign that the people aren't giving in. I mean, that's that's two months in. Uh, they're still protesting. Uh, there's a very strong civil disobedience movement within Myanmar. This is... The, the people of Myanmar are making very clear to the military and to the international community that they will never give in to military control ever again in their country. This will be a, a fight that they're, they're in to the end. Uh, Ronan, tell me this. Uh, the UN's uh, special envoy for the country is expected to visit uh, Myanmar in the coming days. That's according to the UN. Are we expecting anything big? Well, well, I think what we can expect is the military to, to either frustrate the visit. They've, they've made it very difficult for... Uh, international observers to access the country. Uh, once the once a UN official is in the country, I think you'd expect the military to try and stage manage the trip. Uh, this is this is a military junta that craves legitimacy. They want to demonstrate to the outside world and to the people of Myanmar that they're in control of the country and that they are a legitimate government of the country. But they're not. Uh, the people don't want them, and the international community is fully aware that they are unpopular that they've seized power uh, through violence and that they've they've overturned, or tried to overturn a, a democratic election that was held just last November. Uh, I, I'd expect, in terms of what the UN envoy reports, that they'll report exactly what the people within Myanmar have been trying to communicate to the world whenever the internet's not shut down in their country, which is that the military in control is violent, uh, they are a law unto themselves. I mean, the, the latest figures I understand now, it's more than 600 people mm, have been yeah. murdered by the military since the coup. Yeah. Uh, and, and close to 50 of those are children. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what the UN envoy will be reporting to the outside world. And that's what the military will try and cover up. Um, I also want to ask you, since you mentioned it, you, you mentioned uh, legitimacy, the fact that the junta is craving this. You know, uh, just a couple of hours ago, earlier in the day, uh, I came across some reports stating that the Chinese have actually reached out to some of the lawmakers of this underground government. Um, what do you think that means? Is there any significance to that? Well, well I think it is. I mean, Ch China wants stability within Myanmar. And it, China wants to know that its economic interests in Myanmar will be protected. Now, we're two months in and the country's economy is in free fall. Uh, the military have been shown as incapable of, of governing the country. I mean, this, this, is, the, this is the challenge for the military. They're, they're, when they're in power, they're not capable of governing the country because the people won't cooperate with them. So it's un, it's, it will be no surprise that, that countries like China will, will start to come around to the view that maybe maybe the shrewder thing to do now is to support a transition back to uh, democratic rule in Myanmar, because that's the only way this country can function. The people have had 50 years of military rule. They don't want them back. And they've decided this time th that they're going to draw a line in the sand and put up with no more. All right. Ronald Lee, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate the analysis.